Welcome beautiful Thriver to Thriver TV where today I want to talk to you about how to take your power back and never be derailed by a narcissist again. What I'm going to share with you are the things that I ideally needed to learn and believe me they're going to save your sanity, your soul and your life literally. It's so important what I'm going to share with you today. Okay, but before I get into today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my upcoming 10 week program starting in May called Thrive. It's for anyone still struggling with recovering and who isn't yet thriving after abuse. And I'm so excited about it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. Each week in my brand new program, we're gonna be doing enlightening and fun workshops. We're gonna be doing powerful quantum freedom healings, live Q and A's, and lots more to help you finally heal your trauma and any stubborn blocks that are stopping you from spreading your wings and thriving. So you can find out all the details and register your spot at melanietoniaevans.com forward slash thrive. The details are also with the link that appears in this video and in the show notes. Okay, so let's dive in and learn how to never be derailed by narcissistic grand derailers again. But first of all, we need to investigate how they derail you. How does a narcissist get the upper hand? By triggering every unhealed part in you that makes you regress back into the powerlessness, pain, outer seeking, which is trying to get relief from out there, or and trying to fix or change somebody else instead of standing in your true power and light. In other words, a narcissist uses your wounds against you. And that's it, those insecurities or unhealed parts, the narcissist uses those bullets inside of you to load up their gun to fire at you. A narcissist knows this. They've been practicing this at a very, very early age. How to actually feel into people, identify what it is that they feel that is still hurting them, or what it is that they feel that is missing. And the narcissist knows how to hit that person with those things to trigger them, to get them to hand their power over. But I'm gonna give you specific examples about this so that you're gonna understand at a deeper level later in this video, what's really, really going on with the narcissist. But what happens is as soon as you're triggered, you're pulled out of your powerful innate self, your center, and you regress back into childhood or past life traumas, meaning those parts of you that have now been activated and they've come to the fore that are feeling powerless to protect yourself. When you're triggered into these survival programs, you suffer from adrenaline and cortisol. And what that is, is that's fight, flee, or freeze. And it's where you have brain fog. You can't think, you can't get to solutions. You don't know what to say. And the reason for that is everything shut down, shuts down, you're back in your amygdala, which is triggering you into survival programs. And you don't have access to cognitive solution, power, wisdom, or the logic to be able to detach and know what to do. You just don't have access. And it's so important to understand what's literally physiologically, chemically going on within you so that you can accept that this is what happens. And when you look back through the patterns and when this has happened, when you get triggered by a narcissist, if you're honest with yourself, you know that's what happens. And you know that in those times, it's like watching yourself by remote and you can't stop yourself reacting in a way that you know is not helping you, but it's like you feel powerless, you're hijacked by it. That's what's going on. So now that you know this, I want to help you get prepared for those inevitable times when a narcissist is going to try to derail you and get you to hand your power over. It's really important to be prepared because even if you've left a narcissist, he or she may fire a shot across your bow to get you react again. 
And there's always the possibility of coming across a dark soul in the future who's going to try and do that. And it's really impossible to try and avoid narcissists because you would literally have to hide out and never be in life. And that's not what living is. So it's much better to be prepared, empowered and impervious to narcissists. So what is your preparation for battle? Let's talk about that. Would you walk onto a battlefield without being armed? Of course you wouldn't. Would you, after being blown up in the past, re-enter a fray doing the same things and expecting a different result? Of course you wouldn't. So you need to battle prepare. And what does that mean? It re means removing all of your inner targets so that the narcissist has nothing to aim and fire at. So what this really means, it means healing and rectifying all the ways how a narcissist has been able to trigger you, derail you, and then get the upper hand in the past. Then you won't be triggered. There's nothing that's been hit because there was nothing there to hit. And then you won't be overtaken by the chemicals of cortisol and adrenaline, which means that you get that brain fog and you start acting in automatic reactions that are handing your power away. You're not going to do it. Instead, you're going to be in your body, sane, connected, able to clearly and powerfully define yourself in the situation, know your truth, align with that, create boundaries and live the truth of your life regardless of what that person is or isn't doing. That's true power and freedom. Okay, let me give you some real life examples to help you out with this and you'll probably relate to some of these if not all of these. I'm going to start off with the terror of abandonment. And I'm going to use myself as this example. It's a really common one. And I used to have the absolute horrors of abandonment coursing within me. And the narcissist in my life worked this out and absolutely would use it for maximum impact. So what would happen? We'd be all really good and everything would be fine. And then out of nowhere or at the slightest provocation, or during an argument, the narcissist would tell me that the relationship was over. And when that happened, I felt like the rug was pulled out from under me. I was triggered into literal panic. And the feelings were so white hot and out of control, I really felt like I was going to die. And what followed were actions of mine that shocked me. I would chase after them. I would hand away all my rights and boundaries just to remain connected. I would beg, I would plead, I would apologize for things I hadn't done. I knew I was selling my soul, but I just couldn't stop myself doing this. And I know some of you have been through this horror yourself. Absolutely. Was this a mature adult woman inside of me conducting this behavior? No, absolutely not. It was a broken, traumatized, unhealed three-year-old little girl that was activating all of this. On the topic of abandonment, when it got triggered off and I was faced with it, I would regress back to this traumatized, terror terrorized part of myself who'd never been healed yet. And absolutely, I'd had an experience when I was at a very young age that was very traumatizing around abandonment. This also to my inner being was about past life events, which had literally mean meant death if I was left behind. And for women up until, you know, the last however many decades without a man, she had a really limited chance of safety and survival. You know, this is a very big thing that's in the female pain body. It can be in the male pain body and it's a human survival trauma. And when I was triggered personally, as I know a lot of you have been, it feels like you're fighting for your life and you'll do anything to hang on. 
And I know you relate because I've met so many of you who've suffered exactly the same thing. And this is regardless of your earning capacity, the structures, your ability to survive, those feelings of if you leave me, I'm going to die can have absolutely nothing to do with the logical and the practical. They're deep emotional survival programs that when they're triggered, they are ferocious. And if a narcissist has identified this within you, they will hit that mark. Okay, so fast forward for myself from those events. I realized when I was in Thriver Recovery, I really had to face this and do the work on it so that I would never again in the future give away all my rights and my values to stay attached to an abuser. So I got to work. I worked with Quantum Freedom Healings to find and release those trauma energies, those beliefs and those fractures of those previous experiences of the horrible trauma of abandonment until it just felt completely benign in my body. Like abandonment and those triggers felt like a memory without emotional energy of thinking about somebody else. And sure enough, life and my soul faithfully delivered an experience to me to see if I'd graduated. And there was, this is how it works. There was a time in the future when I'd started dating somebody, he crossed a boundary and I spoke up and laid the boundary. And rather than meet me at that higher level that respected my values, he threatened abandonment. Now in the past, I would have felt panicked and I would have handed my boundary and my values away. But what happened was this time, I felt calm and clear and powerful in my body. There was an adult solid female in charge inside of me. And I knew from his response that I'd been given my answer. I didn't want to be with this person and what he represented. It wasn't good enough for my values and my truth. I let him go and felt really great about that. And when he tried to circle back, I stood true in my decision. It was so good because I was liberated and celebrating my huge win in no longer being derailed by abandonment. Now, I know I don't have to tell you what a glorious evolution and graduation that was for me, as it can be for you because no longer was I going to be playing out traumatizing relationships with those who were matching that unhealed wound that would keep delivering it to me. So, okay, now on to the next example, which is being accused of terrible things. And one of my Thriver clients, a lovely man named Peter, he was hooked in by his ex-narcissist and even though they'd separated, he was having a lot of trouble trying to get a settlement and get custody sorted out in court. He couldn't have any sort of meaningful, fair interaction with her in regard to getting things settled and sorted, which I know a lot of you go through. It's very narcissistic. And his soon to be ex-wife, she was accusing him of affairs and taking money and she was pitting the children against him, smearing um, him you know, doing all of the things that narcissists do. And predictably, of course, these were all of the things that she'd been doing herself and she was projecting it at him and making it his fault. Peter, you know, a decent, nice guy, was so horrified by these accusations and he was continually hooking in over and over again, trying to explain and justify and grant her the proof to dispel all of these accusations. All he wanted to do was her to move on, do the right thing. He cared about her, he didn't want her to hurt. And he wanted her to believe that he was a nice guy. But this was just feeding her narcissistic supply. It kept him engaged with her on the phone or by emails and text messages. And it hooked him in. So she could continue abusing him and accusing him and controlling him by trying to change her mind about blaming him for ruining the marriage, he was in wrong town. 
it equaled how to lose. He just kept Peter on the hook, handing over his energy and completely delaying any process with the finalization of their marriage, their custody or their property. None of that was gaining any ground at all. When Peter turned inwards and he did the inner work on these triggered traumas, on his bullets that she was loading up and firing at him, he discovered terrible traumas in regard to being punished and discarded if people thought that he was doing the wrong thing. And these were traumas and programs long before his marriage. When he was able to heal these traumas, he was able to think about the accusations from his ex without any pain at all. There was no emotional energy on it. He was just clear. I'm not that person. It doesn't matter what you think of me. It's important what I think of me. It was then that she lost all power over him. She couldn't get the rise. She couldn't get the reaction. She couldn't get narcissistic supply. He was able to stay calm, no longer engage in that rubbish and move proceedings along and get custody and property settlements happening in really positive ways which many people in our community achieve regularly. So the differences for Peter regarding how things were going compared to how things didn't go, when he removed the bullets that she kept shooting at him were like night and day. Okay, let's have a look at suffering infidelity. This is a big thing that happens in narcissistic abuse. Nicole, suspected that her partner was having an affair because he was really flirtatious and attentive towards other women. He was always talking about other women and he would often say that he was working back late at his office. And Nicole's intuition was buzzing. She knew. And when she tried to speak to him about her concerns, he told her she was imagining things and it was her own insecurity that was making her jealous and that previous relationships were making her like this. And he'd say, I'm not those men. <clears throat> Stop accusing me of being like your ex-husband, all that stuff. One night while he was having a shower, Nicole looked at his phone and her most terrible fears were confirmed. And there it was, the absolute point blank evidence that he was having sex with somebody else. So she confronted him and he unleashed on her with how disgusting it was that she was checking his phone and that she could make such accusations about him. Nicole was so traumatized. She thought she was going to vomit and she was screaming at him over and over what she'd read. He took, he'd taken the phone and he was standing back and telling her how irrational, insane and ridiculous she was behaving. And he denied, flatly denied that the text message meant anything. The proof had been right in front of her. And yet here she was trying to convince him of what he'd done, which he was just flatly denying, rather than pull away and take care of herself. Before Nicole started working with her in a being, when I first met her, she was nearly suicidal. She was still with him. He was treating her disgustingly. He'd made her promise that she would never bring it up again and that she needed to go and get therapy and help for her own dire insecurities. It was that horrible. I explained to Nicole that he was using her unhealed traumas against her because this isn't an adult self-respecting woman inside of her because an adult self-respecting woman would go, oh, it's done, right? And she couldn't. This always means there's embedded trauma. And this was the embedded trauma of being replaced by other women and suffering the horrors of being cheated on. And Nicole told me, yes, it had happened to her in previous relationships. It was a pattern and that her mum had suffered the same fate with her father who had left 
them, the family, when Nicole was very young for another woman. Okay, so we got to work and Nicole turned inwards with quantum freedom healing and she found and she released all of the generational childhood and personal traumas that she had wedged inside her on this topic. After doing this in a work and being freed with that and replacing it and reprogramming it, which is what quantum freedom healing does, she felt no pain on that at all. And she was repulsed by him. It was like this adult woman had woken up, looked at him and gone, oh, yuck. Oh, that's not for me. She left him. No longer was she triggered into repeating the pattern of the powerless child who'd not only suffered her father's departure, but also her mother's intense depression and struggles. She had shifted on the inside to be the self strong, self honoring woman who knew she deserved better. She was able to kick it to the curb and she never went through the experience of being attracted to and clinging to adulterous men again. She would graduated on that inner love code program. Okay. So in conclusion, I hope that this is making sense to you. To you. Do you recognize yourself in any of these examples? There are countless other examples, countless. And one thing is for sure, the thing or things that the narcissist is derailing you on are exactly the places that you need to turn inwards to, lean into and heal within yourself. Okay, so I would love you if this resonates with you deeply, I want you to pause this video so that I know I get your feedback and I want you to write below in the comments, Mel, I get it so that I know you get it. And then if you want to let me know where you are on this journey with this, have you started the inner work yet? Have you had wonderful results because of your inner work? Are you free of those triggers now? Because this is the bottom line, changing your inner code is what stops the narcissist from derailing you. And this applies to any painful relationship program that you've had in your life, whether it's to do with a spouse, love, a family, friends, your workplace, whatever it is. This takes away the ammunition to hurt you and what is replaced is your own values, boundaries and power. And that's the work I love to help you do. Find the exact keys within you that have been keeping you in the trauma and not allowing you to thrive, then release them and reprogram them. If you want to learn more about that and work closely with me and my team for 10 weeks in our most hands-on abuse recovery program to date, my brand new 10 week Thrive program starts in May. And it's open for registration now. A lot of spots have already gone, but we still have some left. Powerful shifts and breakthroughs are going to happen in this program. So click here, what appears on the screen or have a look in the show notes to learn more about Thrive and register before all the spots are gone. And as always, I'm so looking forward to your comments and your questions below. I hope that this was really helpful and can help empower you. And until next time, keep smiling, keep healing and keep thriving because there is nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.